Hello there. How much fuel do you need to fly this? For those who don't play Planetside 2, this is a Bastion Fleet carrier, and it is basically an aircraft carrier with rocket engines strapped onto it. So it actually flies instead of floating on water. So how much fuel does it need? Let's have a look. Fundamentally, a Bastion isn't different from a rocket. The shape is different, but it keeps itself in the air thanks to rocket engines. So let's look at how a rocket works. A rocket propels itself by shooting gas downwards at very high speeds, taking advantage of what we call conservation of momentum. When something throws a projectile in a certain direction, that something gets pushed in the opposite direction. How much that something gets pushed depends on the mass of the projectile and the speed of the projectile. This is exactly what a rocket does. It shoots a massive amount of tiny gas particles downwards at very high speeds. While the mass of each gas particle is very small, with enough of them, and with enough speed, it is possible to push the rocket upwards. So this is how a rocket generates thrust. In order to lift off, a rocket uses thrust to fight gravity. If gravity is stronger than the thrust, the rocket remains on the ground. If thrust becomes stronger than gravity, the rocket takes off. And when thrust and gravity perfectly compensate each other, the rocket hovers and remains in the same place. In other words, its vertical speed is zero. Now you see, rockets face a big problem. The heavier they are, the harder it is to propel them upwards. So the more fuel they need. But the more fuel they have, the heavier they get. So now they need even more fuel. That vicious cycle causes rockets to use enormous amounts of fuel. In fact, around 90% of the weight of a rocket is usually just propellant. So, in the context of a rocket, the question now becomes, how much fuel does a rocket use to hover? Well, let's do the math. We are going to start from Newton's second law that basically says, the change in momentum is equal to the sum of all external forces. With a bit of rearrangement, we can change the equation into this. For this, I won't go into details in the video as this part is a bit confusing, but the derivation is in the description if you want more details. Just know that Vx represents the exhaust velocity of the engine. This now serves as the starting point to get to the formula we want. There is only a single external force acting on the rocket, that is its weight, so let's replace that part of the equation. So we take this equation and integrate it between time equals zero and time equals t. Let's remember that the speed of the rocket is zero since it is just hovering and we get this. Some will recognize this is a variant of the famous rocket equation. That is because this equation is actually the rocket equation, but in the context of being in a gravitational field and no change in speed. Let's explain this equation quickly. T represents the flow of time, in other words, for how long the rocket has been hovering. A minute is the initial mass of the rocket. Mt is the mass of the rocket at instant t. G is the strength of gravity. Vx is the exhaust velocity of the engine. Finally, ln is simply the logarithm function. It's basically the opposite of an exponential. What you need to take away from this is that you need exponentially more fuel as you try to hover for a longer time. Okay, we are nearly done. Let's now try to isolate the amount of fuel our rocket needs. The mass of the rocket is simply the sum of its mass of fuel and its dry mass, that is the mass without any fuel in it. Let's call the fuel's mass mf and the dry mass md. Our equation now looks like this. A little bit more calculus and we finally arrive to this formula. This formula gives you the initial amount of fuel you need to make your rocket hover for t seconds. Pretty cool, right? So now that we have this formula, we can come back to our original problem. How much fuel does a Bastion fleet carrier need to fly over the battlefield? Let's just apply the formula. For that, we need some numbers. First, we will assume that the final mass of fuel after it's done hovering is zero. In other words, it uses up all of its fuel before leaving. For the dry mass of the Bastion, I tried to get it from a solid source, but surprisingly, I didn't get an answer. Then let's assume the dry mass of the Bastion is equal to the mass of the Charles de Gaulle. It's a French aircraft carrier, it's a, it's a completely random choice, just whatever. So 42,500 tons. In the game, the Bastion can over for one hour at most, so that is our target time. Finally, we need to come up with the exhaust velocity of its engines. Currently, the best rocket engines we can build have an exhaust velocity of about 4.5 km per second. Let's plug these numbers and the formula into Wolfram Alpha. We get that the Bastion needs a starting amount of fuel of 110 million metric tons. That... that is a lot. Turns out, you need a lot of fuel to maintain an aircraft carrier in the air. <laughs> Who would have thought? But you know what? Planet Sight is a science fiction game. The Bastion surely uses futuristic technology. Can we change some numbers to take that into account? Well, actually, yes. We can look at the exhaust velocity of the engines. As I said, the biggest rocket engines we currently have expel gas at about 4.5 km per second. But we also have electric propulsion engines that can go up to 100 km per second. What if the Bastion uses electric propulsion engines that have been massively scaled up? Let's plug that new exhaust velocity into Rolfam Alpha. 
And now we get 18,000 tons of fuel. That is still a lot, but it's not an absurd amount, surprisingly. That would be only 30% of the weight mass of the Bastion. You know what? Let's push that a little bit further. What about a sci-fi engine that expels gas at 300 km per second? Well, now we get 5,300 tons of fuel. That is surprisingly reasonable. The Charles de Gaulle has a gas tank of about 3,400 metric tons. Now, don't get me wrong, that is still a lot, because it means you would need to expel more than one ton of gas every single second. That's a lot. But, you know, it's sci-fi tech. So there we have it. With some ultra-advanced rocket engines, I guess it could actually be a thing? Now, I don't know why they would bring a bastion down to Earth to over 500 meters above the ground when they could have it bombard the battlefield from orbit, but that is science fiction logic for you. So, that's the answer. A surprising one at that. Do you have any suggestions on what I should cover next? Feel free to let me know in the comments. I love getting new ideas for this. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, I will do more of this. You can also leave a like. Thank you for watching.